Welcome to another edition of Feel This Pain. I'm Ken McKim, and tonight we're going to be talking a little bit about something known as acute intermittent porphyria. So what is it? Well, acute intermittent porphyria, otherwise known as AIP, is a genetic disease that is inherited from one parent. That's otherwise known as what's called an autosomal dominant disease. AIP is just one of four kinds of acute porphyrias, but of those four, it is by far and away the most common kind. Now, all four of these porphyrias share certain characteristics, including the uh, overproduction and buildup of chemicals, which are called porphyrins. Normally, that's not a big deal. You have porphyrins naturally in your body. However, an overproduction of them can cause an enzyme imbalance that affects the liver and can lead to some very nasty symptoms. Now, this is a genetic disease, but keep in mind that not everybody who has the abnormal gene becomes symptomatic. In fact, 70 to 80 percent of the people with the abnormal gene never develop symptoms, and doctors have absolutely no idea why. And as you might guess, women are more likely than men to become symptomatic in the first place. And again, doctors have no idea why they suspect it might have something to do with hormones, but it's really theoretical at this point as to what the reason might be. Now, AIP can be very hard to diagnose because well, the symptoms mimic so many other chronic conditions. Doctors who suspect AIP, and not a lot of them do because not a lot of them are familiar with AIP, uh, but those who suspect it might confirm their suspicions by ordering a test. And what this test is looking for are high levels of something called PBG in the urine because high levels of PBG are a clear indicator that AIP is probably present. Now, what triggers AIP attacks? Well, any number of things, including smoking, drinking alcohol, low-carb dieting. Even certain medications can bring about attacks. You might be asking yourself, Ken, which medications? Please tell me. I'm not going to tell you. Why? Well, because the American Porphyria Foundation has an amazing website, and on that amazing website, they have a really cool searchable database. I'm going to post a link to that database down in the uh, video description window for you to take advantage of, and you should. You can search any medication you might be taking and see if taking it while suffering from acute intermittent porphyria is a bad idea. Now, you can print this guide of theirs, but it is 33 pages long, so go ahead, but just stock up on ink and paper first. As far as treatment options, again, strangely enough, a diet higher in carbs than protein can help lessen the frequency and intensity of AIP attacks. A friend of mine uses a steady diet of milkshakes, again, you know, high carbs, to help minimize her symptoms. And those of you watching at home are probably thinking, oh yes, a steady diet of milkshakes, fantastic. It's not as fun as it sounds, believe me. Tasty milkshakes do not in any way compensate for the havoc that this disease causes in the lives of the people who suffer from it. Now, as far as medication options, uh, there is a medication called panhematin that has shown to be effective for some people for helping minimize their suffering during an attack. Keep in mind it's not a cure and it's kind of like Rogaine. It doesn't help regrow hair, but once you stop taking it, the effects will wear off. So once you start taking the medication, you're going to be taking it continually. Just keep that in mind. So how does it feel? Well, as far as regular symptoms, you have some of the classics like nausea, vomiting, constipation, uh, rapid heart rate has been noticed, as well as an increase in blood pressure. You may notice that your urine appears darker or might even appear red. And can you think of anything more freaky than seeing red urine in the bowl? I, that would wake me up in the morning. More serious symptoms include things like confusion and hallucinations. 
AIP attacks can even affect the nerves that control your muscles. So you might notice muscle weakness or even muscle paralysis. And of course, there's always pain, isn't there? So what kind of pain are we talking about? Well, severe pain. How severe? Pain that requires hospitalization and morphine, just for starters. Now, you might think I'm kidding, right? I'm not kidding. Some people have described the sensation as feeling like there is a superheated branding iron inside of their guts. Now, of course, you and I don't have any practical experience with having branding irons in our guts, so what could I relate this to? Um, okay, think back to the last time you really burned yourself good on something in the kitchen, like on a hot pan on the stove or a baking dish out of the oven, okay? I imagine that when you burned yourself, you yanked your hand away pretty quick, right? I, I mean, sure. Now, imagine if it wasn't your hand being burned. Imagine if someone who didn't like you very much strapped a 400 degree baking dish to your abdomen and you couldn't pull away, you couldn't take it off, and it didn't ever really cool down. That's the kind of pain we're talking about. Now, if you're at home and any of this sounds familiar to you and you're thinking, hey, maybe I have this, there's a simple test you can do at home that will point you in the right direction. It's really easy. All you have to do is pee in a cup or a glass, you know, whatever. It doesn't affect me which one you use. And then you take the urine outside into the sunlight, maybe in a private area, patio or something away from the eyes of prying neighbors. Just saying. Anyway, if the urine then darkens as a result of exposure to the sunlight, you might be onto something and you may want to talk to your doctor about AIP sooner rather than later. And if you know somebody who has acute intermittent porphyria, I would invite you to think back on the example of the superheated branding iron in the guts. And then extend that person all the compassion that you can muster because their pain is great and their need for your compassion is likewise great. And that's all we have this week. Thank you so much for joining me. As always, if you have questions, feel free to send them to me at ken at don'tpunishpain.com. You can also reach out to me over on Twitter at don'tpunishpain. That's all the time we have for this week, but thank you so much for joining me. And until next time, I'm Ken McKim. You take care.